Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. In this video, we're going to be going over Samsung's latest interface. It's One UI 8, running on top of Android 16. This UI made its debut with this year's Galaxy Foldable Phones, but it should be rolling out soon to many other devices. So let's dive into One UI 8 and see what it's all about and what's new. One UI 7 was a pretty major overhaul, and Samsung hasn't gone that route this time around. The look and feel of the interface is basically the same. You have the separate notification center and control center. And the home screen layout and the look of the icons and widgets is quite familiar. Like before, you can place supported widgets in a stack and swipe through them. And you can even create a widget shortcut to a specific shooting mode for the cameras. Of course, you get a suite of Google apps. And there are Microsoft ones too. And naturally, there are many proprietary Samsung apps as well. On Samsung phones, the app drawer is on by default. Inside, you can long press on app icons to call up shortcuts for quick actions. The task switcher isn't only about switching between apps. By long pressing the app icons on the top and dragging them to different areas of the screen, you can open up the apps in split screen or pop up view mode. There's also an edge panel. It's an area for shortcuts that you access by swiping from the edge of the screen. From here, it's easy to launch apps into a split screen, and you can store shortcuts for split screen pairs as well. One UI 8 mostly brings tweaks and small reworks of existing features of One UI 7, and the multitasking is one of them. Now you can set up a split screen where one app occupies 90% of the screen, while the other is basically minimized into a 10% window. Then you can switch to that app by tapping on it. It's a useful feature similar to what we've seen in OnePlus phones. Another convenient feature is that within the file manager, you can now filter your downloaded files based on the app that was used to download them. Then there's the now bar on the lock screen. It displays you things like sports scores and playing media. And with One UI 8, Samsung has integrated the now bar with Android 16's live updates feature, expanding the third party support. Samsung's DeX has gotten reworked too in a similar fashion. This is the feature that allows you to connect the phone to an external monitor or PC. But while before it was based on Samsung's proprietary software, now it's based on Android 16's native desktop mode. You can use DeX to connect either via a cable or make a wireless connection to compatible screens. QuickShare has been redesigned too, with a large full screen interface. With routines, you can set up a script to activate functions based on certain conditions. You can also now set up certain actions based on info from the clock, the calendar, or even the notes app. The secure folder is back, but there are additional features now. You can set up its own separate fingerprint for biometric unlock, and you can hide away the secure folder app icon using a toggle in quick settings. When it comes to AI features, in general, you get the same suite you did with One UI 7. There is one thing to mention, and it has to do with Gemini Live. It's able to draw on info from different apps to perform tasks for you, and is available across Android devices. But phones running One UI 8 have Gemini Live integration with not just Google Apps, but some Samsung ones too, like the calendar, notes, and reminders. The other AI features provided by Samsung haven't changed much since the previous UI version. This includes AI integration within the Samsung browser, where you can have the AI summarize articles on the page. The AI can also summarize videos you open within the browser, but these summaries are honestly pretty limited in comparison, and seem more like a prompted response based on the video title. Other AI-driven features include support for natural language when searching through the gallery and settings. Now Brief, which gives you a readout about the weather and your daily routine, is also AI-based. The Samsung keyboard itself has AI features built into it, like a translator and a writing tool. AI Select analyzes the screen's content and gives you plenty of options, including capturing objects on screen and even making GIFs out of videos, and in One UI 8 it's now faster and smoother. In One UI you can make AI generated images, based on your own sketches, through the Drawing Assist function, which you can find in Notes. Within the Live Interpreter, the AI can interpret a conversation in real time between two different languages. You also get real-time two-way translation of calls within the native phone app, with quite a few languages supported. And the AI can transcribe a recorded conversation into text with speaker labels, and then summarize that for notes. 
Finally, there are AI-driven editing tools you can use to touch up your photos within the gallery. This includes functions like resizing or removing objects. Samsung has the best implementation of this feature among all the competitors. There's even a way to touch up the audio within your video clips with AI-based noise reduction. Let's see if we can remove this noise. Let's see if we can remove this noise. And that's not even all. Here are a few other Samsung features which aren't based on AI. Samsung phones have a gaming hub where you can access all of your games, as well as gaming-specific options, all in one place. This is tied to an overlay which you can access in-game, and from here you can see the resource utilization in real time. In One UI, your security and privacy options are easy to find. They're organized within a specific dashboard and settings. And there's also a battery settings menu, which gives you options to help preserve your battery longevity, like choose a custom percentage to which you want your battery to charge. So there you have it, guys. One UI 8 brings mostly the same experience as the previous version, just with a few refinements, integration of native Android 16 functions, and the new split screen mode. Did I miss your favorite feature? Let us know what you think, and I'll see you on the next one.